Hey Church of Maine, welcome to this week's Midweek at Maine video, Gospel Reflections for Everyday Life. The ups and downs of 1 Peter chapter 3 center around how to live a life of being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus, when the world around you won't participate, won't celebrate, and even will persecute you or lead you into suffering and the various ways that suffering will occur as you live a life of glorifying God through your humility, through your deference of taking charge, your willingness to not take control of outcomes or fight for certain normative things in the world. You use instead the mode of peace, the way of Jesus, and you, you learn to live with him abiding in you and you abiding in him, that, that you start to identify the world differently. And, and in all of that happening, suffering inevitably befalls our lives. And that's a lot of what Peter's trying to encourage these chosen exiles in, in First Peter to live set apart lives well and for them to have the peace that Jesus provides. And the way that that comes is, is don't pick up the ways of the world. You know, don't repay evil for evil like we saw a couple of weeks ago. Don't, don't insult when people insult you. And, you know, even a couple of weeks back when we looked at this idea of be prepared to have a defense when someone asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, that your hopefulness in the midst of difficult circumstances would cause other people to question your motives. Why are you so hopeful? And, and so this last week, Noah brought to bear one of my favorite texts in, in Scripture. And it's this simple uh, reminder and encouragement, but also a, a sort of laser shot clarity on the gospel, the good news. What is the, what is the news that you need to hear, that your heart and your mind need to hear, need to be reminded of? that's truly good, not just good in the way that we feel about it, but objectively, this is good. This is pure gold news here. And it's that Christ also suffered to bring us to God. Christ suffered. When Christ suffered, he did so in order to bring us to God. Now, a lot of what Noah did was incredibly helpful to recognize the kinds of things that we believe Jesus died for and their secondary sort of realities. The text says, here's, here's a, a way to think about the good news and how you can suffer in the midst of difficult circumstances. Maybe your family or friends or co-workers aren't super happy you're a Christian and they're not even really all that jazzed at the idea that you're following Jesus and that you're wanting to be in a church gathering on a regular basis, that you're wanting to be discipled, you're wanting to grow in your faith, join a life group perhaps where you're going to be relationally engaging God's word and God's people to help grow your heart to trust Jesus and find greater health in your being equipped and being built up in love. By the way, our life groups at Maine page, if you, if you go to churchatmaine.org, uh, you'll be able to see the life groups page there and you can click on that and you can look through our existing life groups that just launched last night. You'll be able to look at these and be able to see very clearly the kinds of groups that will be available for you this fall starting in September. And so you can start to fill out some information now to ask some questions about maybe talking to one of those group hosts to learn more about when they're going to meet, what they're going to be discussing and how you guys can journey together following Jesus. But the reality is there are people in your life that won't celebrate that with you. And Noah, Noah helped me and all of us. I hope you were able to recognize just the incredible power of what he shared and the excellence with which he did it. That the good news is not about what we've been saved from, although that is true, that we've been saved from hell by receiving Jesus's free gift of grace that God the Father has, has given us. Absolutely. Uh, rescued from the perils of eternal damnation. Yes, absolutely. But what Peter wants the church to focus on, and this is what I want you to focus your mind and your heart on very clearly. It isn't about a gratitude of what we've been saved from that Peter runs to. It is a gratitude of what we've been saved to. It is the, the what, what God intended to do is that Jesus Christ suffered the, the righteous for the unrighteous, right? To bring us to God. Now, just quickly here, I want to end this. 
bringing us to God behind me in in and you'll see in this in this view of this video you see these colors this the color green and for some of you boy this time of year really captivates your attention and the sound of that bird in the background that blue jay taking taking flight and arguing with other birds in the trees and you're the cicadas in the background guys isn't this place amazing it isn't like the if for those of you who've been to the ocean right and or maybe you've gone to stand at the foothills of a great mountain range you know years ago i was in northern india and i, I was flying in northern india um, near a few of the northern cities and we were close to the Himalayas and I could see out my window. I was facing, my, my window in the airplane was facing the north and I could see the Himalayas and this incredibly amazing giant mountain range was so, I mean, I was, you know, 20, 30,000 feet in the air and I'm, I'm looking at these incredible tall mountains all covered with snow. It was this beautifully clear day. And, and sometimes one of the things I'll do in the mornings is I'll take water and I'll splash my face to kind of wake up a little bit. I don't know if any of you guys do that or not, but here's what I want you to think about. Peter says that Jesus Christ suffered, chose to suffer in order to bring us to God, bring you to God. But that, that image of God, that God is the creator of all of your feelings. You know, we're the only being in the universe that God has created that can, can take his creation and, and interact with it and immediately worship because of it. You know, a deer is not munching on grass in the meadow going, boy, this is amazing grass. I'm so grateful that God created me with taste buds and, and all of this stuff. And, and bugs aren't flying around in the air being like, man, this wind is amazing. We get to experience this earth in ways that nothing else can. We have joy and our, our hearts can be captivated by the seasons. So this week, as you think about life groups and you think about your life with Christ, focus on this, that God's desire was to bring you home to him forever, belonging to the body forever, being a part of the kingdom of God. And one last thing, if I can share a bit of encouragement to you. Many times for, for a lot of years, those of us that are, are, are trying to figure out ways in our lives to learn how to share our faith and both be better disciples and grow as disciples of Jesus, learners, um, apprentices of Jesus. We don't know where to start and we don't know, you know, is it, is it more information? Is it more this, more that? This, this Sunday night uh, at six o'clock, we're going to have uh, some bottled water and some light food, you know, some lunch meat and some crackers and things like that available. Uh, love for you to join us. It's called Connect, Serve, Grow. And uh, every couple of years, we hope to do this where we get our whole church family together. Uh, there isn't child care provided, but children are welcome and certainly makes sense for them to join with you in this. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be together from 6 to 7 p.m. Rashad and myself will share just very briefly on what the night will be about. And then, and then you're going to be encouraged to take a look at some of the ways you can connect and serve and grow just right now in our church family. And, and there's some simple yeses, some small just ways to, to join. Maybe maybe it's the mowing team or help take care of our campus a little bit, or, or maybe it's to work with our kids and the kids at Main Area, either as somebody who helps with the teaching, or maybe it's somebody who's helping in one of the rooms. And a lot of different spaces where you can connect and serve and through these things grow. So I wanna encourage you this Sunday night, 6 p.m., we're gonna conclude the evening from seven to 7.30 or maybe eight o'clock with a time of worship and prayer. Um, being led by a, a friend of mine and some of our team. But I want to encourage you with this. All of our church family together, part of what God very much wants for us to do is to get into each other's lives and to practice doing hospitable things for one another and our whole church family. So be with us tonight, this upcoming Sunday night, 6 p.m. for Connect, Serve, Grow as a way of taking these gospel reflections and putting them into practice in our church family. I look forward to seeing you guys Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Sunday night at 6 p.m. A church of Maine.